The Ellswick Kids. Written by Ray Sweet. Narrated by Lucas Pace. With sound design by Steph Roy. Amidst rubble, crumbling houses, and dust so thick you could choke on it, were the Ellswick Kids. This particular town in Ellswick was ash grey, with dark buildings and sombre, faceless people. From a distance, it looked like a black and white photograph. A little pocket of the world frozen in time. In the world of colour, they avoided this monochromatic place, and with their noses pointed to the clouds, they ignored the Ellswick kids. Where there was colour, there were smiles. Kids who had fresh new clothes without any holes. Kids who had wonderful shiny toys, so many that they grew bored of them. The Ellswick kids had only raggedy old clothes and patched up trousers that swung above their ankles. Their toys were whatever they could find that the colour people had discarded in the rubble. The toys the lucky kids had grown bored of. Their favourite toy was a rusty Morris Minor. A decade ago it was one of the most desired cars in England, but now it was out of fashion, and all that was out of fashion became property of the Ellswick kids. Of course, the older boys had taken the car as their territory. They crouched on the roof, or one would sit inside with their legs dangling out, kicking at the broken door, and they'd smoke their cigarettes and yell to the others, Huh, we can see them collars up here. Most of the other kids didn't believe them, but every now and then, a boy maybe aged 10 or 11 would approach them timidly and ask, Ah, oh, I got one smoke I stole. And, and yous can have it, if I can just sit up there with yous, for one minute. And then the brave boy would be invited to sit up on the roof of the car, which was starting to cave in, and look down at his puny grey friends. Sometimes, when the older boys had left to steal crisps and booze from shops, the younger kids would approach the car. Eleanor loved the car the most. She would watch from her perch on the second floor of a house that had lost its wall long ago, waiting for them to leave. Then she dropped down like a cat onto some dirty, piled-up mattresses and scurried to the car. She always sat in the driver's seat, and her brother, Toby, would join her and ride shotgun. She would pretend to drive laughing as wind blew through her hair and wiped the ash clean from her face and her clothes. She and Toby saw flashes of colour. The brick was red. The sky was blue. And the paint on the car mint green. Without a single scratch. But then the older boys would return. Towering over them, and chuckling, clouding the colour with their breath that was heavy with the stench of tobacco. Eleanor would jump out the car and look back at it, and see it once again rusted and coated with ash. Sometimes, she tried to wipe the grime away, and through it, she thought she saw a glint of mint green paint. The End with special thanks to Samantha Sweet, River Orlando Sweet, and Scarlet Willow Sweet.